Welcome, everyone. It looks like we are almost ready. Uh, first of all, welcome to Vienna. This is an amazing city, and I wish you a good time here. Let's start uh, for the session. Today, we will talk about, uh, about content modeling in Drupal, and uh, particularly in Drupal 8. First of all, let me to briefly present myself. Uh, my name is Anton, and uh, from October 9, I will work for Closer? OK. And from October 9, I will work for Wanderous, a digital agency which is based in Basel. And I will work as design system architect for them, exactly what we will talk about today. Wanderous team located in Basel, as I said. And we do corporate platforms, service experiences, and mobile web Essential continuation of previous talks, uh, which were made in uh, DrupalCon Barcelona, uh, DrupalCon Dublin, and uh, designed for Drupal Boston earlier this summer. Today, we will talk uh, more about uh, Drupal 8 uh, application of these uh, things and about practical uh, implementation of these concepts. First of all, let's talk about what we have today in Drupal and around it. Uh, let's briefly review what we have uh, and uh, what uh, opportunities do we have right now. Of course, we have panels. Uh, panels is a really popular module uh, with us for a number of years. But what's about panels? First of all, panels is not a content entity. That means that uh, it's tricky to revision, it's tricky to translate, and it's tricky to workflow, etc., etc. All of this because of panel is a special thing, not just a content entity. And uh, another important point here is uh, nesting. It's really complicated to put panel inside panel and control the overall layout. It increases complexity of the whole thing, and it also breaks the relation between inner data and uh, the host layout, like a page. You can say, ah, sorry, sorry about that. Something with the cable. OK, let me to briefly repeat the uh, pros and cons of panels. First of all, panels is not a content entity, uh, which means we don't have a standard functionality like revisioning, translation, workflows, and so on. And uh, panels are really poor with nesting, so putting panels inside panels becomes hard. It breaks relation between content itself and layout, and it increases complexity, of course. Another module we have a uh, paragraphs. It's uh, really popular today and its popularity increasing from day to day. First of all, about paragraphs. Uh, conceptually, it uses a com composite software pattern. That means that uh, page and all of its data is a single whole. Its components couldn't be reused from page to page. And uh, also, nesting is a problem here because nesting paragraphs inside paragraphs are not that easy to manage. Another bad thing about paragraphs, which is a custom entity, that means you cannot mix paragraphs with another standard entities like nodes, user profiles, taxonomy terms, custom blocks, and so on. It's really hard to create a page from different type of data. And uh, another thing about paragraphs, it's not really friendly to contribution models, like in line entity forms, like dynamic entity reference, and so on. The way you're using paragraphs usually is you're using the paragraphs completely, or you switch to another things. Let's look uh, outside of Drupal. What we have uh, not inside Drupal, but around it, uh, is something called atomic design. Atomic design is a great concept, and it will help to solve uh, various problems around design, components, and uh, complex content building. But 
it's just for design. It's not for implementation. It's not for content creation. It's not for site architecture. It doesn't help you to nest components, to provide data to these nested structures, to use templates for organisms, if you know about atomic design terms. Also, it's hard to differentiate uh, pages and organisms and molecules and organisms. So what I would try to say is that atomic design is good for designers, it's good for style guide creation, but it doesn't help you a lot when, you, when things come to a real implementation, to real projects with multiple pages with various layouts. Also, if you start working too atomic, you will fail with maintainability uh, of multiple similar pages. It's also important when you're building a complex and huge website with various content, with various layouts. Okay, let me to summarize the, this small introduction. Uh, we have really powerful things. We will be happy with them. Why? Let's look deeper what we are working with. We are using Drupal. Drupal is content management system, right? But what is content? What is content? Can anybody guess? Okay, I will help you. Actually, content is everything, right? Everything that end user sees in, uh, on its screen is content. Layout is a content, styles are content, and uh, the data structures behind or what users see are also content. Let's look uh, at this pretty simple example. Let's say we have a simple page uh, describing our team and representing our team members' profiles, like Mike, Lisa, and Alex. What we have here, uh, at least we have a heading, which is a data type text, and we have user profile, which is a data type profile. So first of all, content is some data model behind it. We have images, we have objects to be shown on our pages, and so on. But also, we have different, different styles for our data. So we can have different colors, we can have different font sizes, and so on, and so on. So content is empty screen. <laughs> okay. Content is data model, of course, and content is a style or style guide. But it's not enough. Uh, let's look at this uh, simple example again. We have heading and we have three column layout here. So where is something behind styles, behind data model? Uh, this is something we can call building blocks. Let's look deeper at each point of content. First of all is data model. A really good news about uh, data models. I'm sorry about that. I didn't expect it. Okay, good news again. Good news about Drupal is that Drupal is all about data models, right? Everything we do in Drupal is modeling the data. Styling is a bit harder, building blocks, uh, another way of complexity, but data models are really easy. Oh, come on. Okay, about data model again. We have entity and we have fields, and we can compose any data models we want 
using entities and fields. Like on this example, we can compose a product entity which uh, will consist of several attributes, like product ID, revision ID, and so on. We can also have several bundles of uh, products, like a default product and T-shirt. Each can have its own set of fields, like here, price, image, and size, and so on. So Drupal gives us a really flexible way to describe our data models, and we can do it directly in the admin interface without any changes to the code. So Drupal is really powerful at data models. Also, we have entity reference, which is now in Drupal core, which uh, allows us to model a complex nested or referenced content. Like here, we can reference, uh, for example, node entities to user entities and so on. We can create a complex data models describing multiple references and relations between various objects. That's pretty easy now. It's much harder to show my slides on the screen. Okay. We also have advanced things in Drupal. Uh, we can create different entity types directly in admin interface using entity construction kit, for example. We can have uh, revisions for our content which is provided by Entity Revisions, which is in Drupal core. Also, we have translation opportunities and uh, moderation opportunities and so on and so on. Again, Drupal is really good about data modeling. So let's go to the different section about style guide. Style guide a bit more complex uh, with Drupal because it requires you uh, a lot of knowledge of theming system, of rendering system, and so on. First of all, uh, we need some global styling. Thank you, sir. First of all, uh, we want <laughs> first of all, we want slides. Okay, let's go. Further. First of all, we want global one note. The most interesting part is uh, in the next section, so yeah, <laughs> probably we will <laughs> not see it. <laughs> I will try to talk. Uh, first of all, we want global styling for our website, right? It's some kind of uh, global styles affecting the whole components. This is a header styles, paragraph styles, link styles, and so on. Everything we want in the global scope. Uh, also, we want to have some components on the style la layer. Like here, some description uh, of a card component. And actually, the most important thing about it is a markup, because uh, style can be in global scope, but markup is unique for each component. 
Layouts is also important thing. It's a bit different from, from components because it doesn't hold any data. It can use for buttons, for hero blocks, for anything actually. So it's kind of reusable mixins or utilities. It's not a component, it's not a layout, it's something different. It's small pieces of styles we can apply throughout our website. And it's also a part of our style guide. A good thing about style guide, we can now automate the process of maintenance of style guide, of creation style guide, and so on. For example, we can use a fractal component library, which will help us to create new components, to create documentation, to create example pages. So it would be really easy to adopt components through our website and to create new components. But wait, uh, we talk about styles, about tools, but where is Drupal? Where is Drupal in style guide? Drupal is everywhere, of course. Let's go one by one. Global styling is something like we include in our theme a CSS bundle. So from the style guide point of view, the output of it will be a single CSS file or a set of files, doesn't matter. But in the Drupal, we include uh, the whole CSS file. We don't know about internal structure, how it's built, it doesn't matter. For Drupal, it's important to have these files somewhere in themes in theme. Components are exposed to Drupal via tweak templates or via UI patterns model, which is uh, relatively new on the Drupal landscape. Layouts are also a tweak template files, which can be directly in Drupal or can be exposed to Drupal via layout API. Utilities are also can live in tweak templates. Uh, we can just put CSS classes there and so on. Or we can put our utility CSS classes in the admin interface if uh, we have such functionality. For example, we can set up a special CSS class for each view element when creating a view. Okay, we have a data model uh, which allows us to have a huge structured database. We have a style guide which contains all of our patterns, styles and templates and it's independent from Drupal itself. And we want to combine both of things. We want to get some data and to apply styles from our style guide to get a content instance. So each of our pages on the website is content instances which has some data behind them and some styles applied to them. And we need some place where we can control this process. We need some place where we can get data and apply styles. Let's call this place a building block. It's something which can get the data and apply style to get to create some content instance in the end. Okay, here is the most interesting part of this talk. It's about building blocks. Building blocks is a key layer in all of this concept. Let's go step by step. First, how to render a simple data. It's pretty simple with Drupal, we can just create a tweak template and to render some data from database using tweak template, like we do for nodes, blocks, user profiles, and so on. That's pretty easy. But how to render the same data with the same data model a bit slightly differently? Like here, we have two user profiles, one we want in pink and another we want in blue, for example. We can use uh, CSS modifiers. We can include them directly in the tweak templates or we can put them somewhere in admin interface. But how to render data quite differently? Like here, if we want the same user profile to be shown completely different in different parts of our website. Again, the data is the same, the data model is the same. The only difference is its layout and styles. We also have an opportunity here. We can use display modes. It's a built-in mechanism. 
We just need a way to use it for, on our pages. We also can render li a list of dynamic, dynamic lists of our objects using views, for example. And now let's talk about how to compose the complex data, not just to render what we have in database, because initially Drupal is all about just rendering what is in database. We get node, we render it. We get user profile, we render it. We get taxonomy term, we render it. Nothing special about it. When things come more complex, when we need to combine various data on our pages, it's getting more hard. So with simple example, uh, where we can combine a heading, an image, and some text, let's look closer to it. One simple solution is to use multi-value entity reference field uh, for this. We can reference a various data uh, described by, by data models in our database, and we can reorder them, we can reuse components, we can reuse our data through our website. So we can combine our various data using this multi-value entity reference field, which is also in Drupal core now. By the way, this is exactly what Paragraphs module does. Paragraphs module is just multi-value entity reference field, and each paragraph is a separate entity. We can create separate bundles for paragraphs, paragraph types, we can mix them together to combine a complex data. But let's look deeper at this simple example. What is it? It's a simple single column layout, right? We have heading, we have image, we, can, we have a paragraph of text, and all of this is just a single column layout. Pretty simple thing. But what if we want a more complex layout? What if we want the two columns here? It's getting more hard. Uh, paragraph's way is to create a special paragraph type, for example, two column paragraph, which will hold two columns inside it, and when we can place this new paragraph type inside our page with a heading. So in the end, we will have a, at least four paragraph types and we have uh, uh, two layers of nesting here. Okay, but what if we want uh, two columns inside second column? It's, uh, as, as well, uh, again, this is a pretty simple example of really simple layout, but things getting more hot. hot. Again, uh, we need paragraph type of two columns here we can create we should create another paragraph and place it in place in second column and you can see how this structure is complex and the complexity is rising each type each time we make any change to the layout it's not that flexible actually it requires you uh, additional instances of paragraphs and uh, several layers levels of nesting the pros of this solution is uh, each paragraph is self-contained. It can be edited separately, it can be viewed and accessed separately. But on the other side, each time you use a two-column layout, like we just saw in the example, a new entity is created and the complexity and the amount of data stored in database is rising. Another con of paragraphs is uh, the data should be loaded recursively because uh, we nest one paragraph inside another paragraph inside another paragraph. We couldn't just load the data as a, at once. We should load uh, one paragraph when all child paragraphs and so on. It's also a complexity for us. But what's more important, it's pretty hard to manage the overall layout. Uh, Let's look at this again. We have several layers of nesting, and uh, to change anything in this structure, we have to go inside each paragraph to change something there and then go out. It's really hard to manage complex layout built on top of paragraphs. And uh, another con, it's hard to associate data to host pages because Paragraphs 
are nested one inside another, we can lose a relation between the host page and the inner paragraphs. Why so many cons of a so handy and popular module? Because the layout uh, should be a responsibility of the host page, not a responsibility of each separate paragraph, but a responsibility of the host page. Because we have data, we have some images and paragraphs, and we want it to be layouted in some particular layout. I don't want uh, to create special entities uh, and to nest one inside another. I just want uh, a particular layout and to place content inside it. Let's find an alternative way of doing this. Um, I created a small module which uh, named Bricks, and I will show what we can, can we achieve. Let's think of layout as a single thing, not separate entities one inside another, but is a single thing. Okay, we have a layout and we have a data in the database, and now we can put this data in this layout. It's a pretty simple thing, and uh, it's something uh, used throughout the Drupal, uh, but let's use this on the field basis. So when we create a new page, we can change the layout of each page, of each field, actually. But what's more important, that would be really great to allow to nest layouts, one inside another. Not to create a separate entities, separate instances of data, but just to nest layouts, to combine them, like on this picture. We can only have two layouts, single column layout and two column layout, and we can create almost anything from just two layouts. We just need a nesting for that. So the process of the, this way is quite huge. Layouts are totally independent from data, which means we can reuse the layouts through our website. Layouts can be stored as content, and that gives you a way to uh, translate them, to revision them, and to use everything we can use for content. Data in this uh, way can be stored as a flat structure, so it can be loaded without any recursion, because the whole layout is a single thing. Not the nested entities. And managing the overall layout becomes deadly simple, because again, this is a single whole. The data is separated from layout, but layout is a single structure. And the data is directly associated to the page because uh, there is only one thing between data and page, which is layout, which is single. There are some cons uh, as well. Uh, page should be viewed and edited as a single whole because the knowledge of its layout is only in the single place, in its layout. Best practice here is to split the page in smaller components so you will have more control uh, for the long pages. Another con that this is not popular yet because it's relatively new thanks to entity reference and inline entity forms, but you can change it. You can try it and to adopt it into your projects. Okay, let's stop talking about the concept. Let's look at the demo. Okay, we can do it. So what we will do, we will open a simply test me, which is a playground for Drupal modules, and we will launch a sandbox for Bricks module. 
Bricks model itself is a really small pieces of code. It's around 20 kilobytes of code. It's uh, just some uh, integrations between uh, entity reference, uh, between Drupal core, and uh, between inline entity forms, and so on. The key thing about it, it allows you to manipulate with nesting layouts to create the layout you want on the fly without templating and so on. I will show you soon. Actually, you can uh, you can play with demo uh, during. Uh, I will show it. You can just open the page of Bricks module on the Drupal.org, and you can click uh, the link in the this live demo section. It will be installed in a few minutes, and you can play on your own. So once we click on this link, we click install, and when we go through the standard installation process, without any changes, it will install a standard Drupal and several additional modules. Okay, Drupal installed. Let's configure it and start playing around. Okay, we have Drupal installed. First of all, we need to enable the module. I have a special demonstration model for that. It's also a, a part of package. Let's look closer what we have inside. Inside, we have a Bootstrap kit. Bootstrap kit is just a set of layouts for Bootstrap framework. So yeah, in this demo, we will use a Drupal, uh, a standard Drupal installation. We will use a Bootstrap framework as a, our style guide. Uh, it could be your own, but uh, for this example, we will use a Bootstrap since it's pretty simple to use. Uh, we will use Bricks module, which will allow us to nest layouts. We will use inline entity form to be able to edit uh, the data in line on the node edit page. We will use entity construction kit to be able to create a different type of data on the flight in the admin interface. And we will use a layout discovery uh, to be able to consume layouts uh, registered in Drupal system. Okay, let's continue. And we also need some theme, some bootstrap compatible theme, which will provide us a CSS. Let's check that everything. Enabled. Okay, we are ready to go. Let's go to the content section on the website and create some content. Uh, there is some special type of page Bricky, which is pre-configured to use these nested layout structures. Okay, let's give it a name. Uh, let's create a simple content. Let's be some text. So you can see that this is interface is pretty the same to paragraphs. The only difference it's built on top of standard entity reference and line entity form. Okay, we now created a simple page with a single component of type text in it, inside it. Let's add some more content. For example, image.
Okay, we now have a text block inside page, and we have an image above it, under it. So what we would like to do now, as in uh, my example during the slides, let's put it in the different layout. Let's put it in two-column layout. We can select a special layout entity type, which will allow us to select. I will zoom it in. OK, we have a text component. We have an image component. And we have a layout component. And here we can select uh, any layouts registered in Drupal. Let's use equal columns, which is provided by Bootstrap Kit module. So what we want, what we are going to do now, we need some thing to put our text and image inside this layout. We can just drag and drop, and we can put components one inside another, exactly like we do for menus and for taxonomy terms. It's the same mechanism. So what we should have now, we have a layout of type equal columns, and we have two components inside it. Let's look what we have. Yeah, we have two columns on our page. It's pretty easy. So let's, let's try to create something we discussed in the previous talk. Let's put two columns inside second column, like we see in the example. What we need here, we need uh, some kind of wrapper, some kind of container for second column, which will hold uh, the inner content inside it. Uh, we also need uh, a layout thing again. I can zoom it. We also select equal columns here. And let's add two images inside, one and another one. OK, what we have now? We have uh, overall equal columns layout, which hold image as a first column and the wrapper as the next column, which will hold a text and two columns under it. You can see, uh, you can see how it's easy to manipulate the data. Uh, we only have an image and text blocks defined. Uh, we have several layouts registered in Drupal, which is uh, pretty simple now. And we can compose the layout of any structure directly in the admin UI. And uh, the powerful thing about it, it's not limited in any way. You can use it on your own. You can define your own process around it. You can define your own components. You can nest components one inside another. You can nest layout one inside another. Let's try to use CSS classes here. Uh, for example, let's give uh, this text a big size lead CSS class. You can see that uh, we can control First of all, we can control the whole layout of this page by nesting of various layouts one inside another. We can control styling of this page by providing CSS modifiers directly here. And we can also select the view modes right here for each referenced piece of content, which gives us an opportunity to create really flexible content uh, with ease. And of course, we can uh, change everything here. For example, we can put these two columns as a third column of the whole page. So it's really simple to manipulate the data now. Why? Because we separated the data and the layout, and we don't try to put layout inside entities and put entities inside entities. Forget about it. We can control the whole layout in the single place. We can store it in the single place. And it's 
completely separated from the data. Uh, data is completely reused through our website. And layout as well is also reused through our website. So things can be really easy. OK, let's finally make some final notes about uh, this talk. First note is about entity reference. As you just uh, see, uh, entity reference can be used for both data model, uh, like when you, we can reference from node to the user, which is created with node, or we can use it for nesting, like we just did now. So we can put uh, one data inside another data, or we can put layout inside layout, and this is done also by entity reference module. So it's multi-purpose. Second note is about atomicity. So working with things like I just shown is uh, super flexible. It uh, gives you a lot of freedom. But if uh, you will start working too atomic, if you will start to build each page from the ground, you will find out that maintaining of the complex s structures on different pages, which are pretty similar, requires you additional time. So keep the balance. Don't be too atomic. Uh, define your own blocks uh, for your own design and for your own website. So you, couldn't, you will not repeat the same actions from page to page. So atomicity gives you freedom, but on the other hand, it requires you more time to control it. Also note about paragraphs. In the demonstration I just shown, uh, where was no paragraphs, it was a simple ECK and uh, inline entity construction kit and inline entity form. So my question is, why should we use paragraphs if we already have uh, things like entity construction kit and inline entity forms, which allows us to do the same things? And uh, actually, we can do even more because we can reuse entities through our website. Paragraphs couldn't be reused from page to page. So a note about, about paragraphs is uh, next time you will try to use them, think about, do you really need them? Because ECK and inline entity form is the same functionality and a more flexibility, actually. Note about layouts. Layout can be treated as an entity. Uh, the difference between entity and layout is that layout doesn't hold any data. Layout is for representation of data. So it doesn't matter when you, where you put a two-column layout. It's always the same. It's just two columns. So layout can be treated as an entity type or entity bundle. Uh, and uh, this is a small difference between the all other components and layouts, because layouts uh, dataless. So let's summarize and wrap all it up. First of all, separate data, styles, and building blocks. Data is what you store in database. It's what is what represents your real data objects. Styles is what in your style guide is what you is what your brand about and its look and feel. And building blocks is, mo is the most important thing because it allows you to combine your data and your styles to build your unique content instances. Define your own blocks, define, set up your own uh, workflow process for building blocks, and you will success. Another note and takeaway is that paragraphs doesn't work well for all cases, for example, for nested layouts, so next time you will Think about them, try to use, try to set up Drupal without them. And uh, of course, you can try bricks for complex cases. It will give you a control for the whole layout. It will allow you to separate data and layout, and you can control precisely of which piece of content, how it will look like. You can give a CSS modifiers, you can select the view modes, and you can compose your data in the way you want. Thanks. For attention. <laughs> Finally, um, if you want to contribute, uh, you can drop me an email uh, with a subject, let's content model. 
you can just share your thoughts or ideas regarding this session or regarding this concept, doesn't matter. I'm always happy to uh, receive some feedback. You can also, also describe your own complex case. For example, if you are building a complex website and you are thinking about its architecture, you can drop me an email and we can discuss how it's better to create a content strategy for your new project. Or you can just list your Drupal skills and we will uh, think together how you can help uh, to adopt this new concept to Drupal community. Also, it would be great if you spend several minutes and evaluate this session, so next time I will be more prepared and bring with myself uh, several cables. <laughs> <laughs> and also, please take a survey uh, for DrupalCon Vienna to help organizers to uh, organize everything on the perfect level. Thank you again. Uh, thank you to visit in Vienna, and I wish you a really great DrupalCon here. And now uh, I'm ready for your questions, if you have ones. Sure. Sorry, so you can go to microphone, so everyone, everyone in the room will hear. Do you feel going forward that Bricks will offer things that the layout example that Dries gave this morning, you know, will Bricks offer anything that that won't be able to provide? Uh, can you repeat this? So the layout example that Dries gave this morning, do you feel going forward that Bricks will be able to offer anything that that won't provide? E yes, I think uh, it, it can. Uh, looking forward, uh, we can uh, use bricks in various cases. Uh, it can be a replacement for layout builder, builder for example. So uh, short answer is yes. Long answer, it's uh, again, it's super flexible and it's up to you how to use it. You can use it for layout manipulation. You can use it for component manipulation. Uh, you can uh, even create layouts on the fly and register them via layout API to provide them to other modules. So the use cases, uh, a bunch of use cases. Um, I've actually got two questions, if that's okay. Uh, one was, um, you didn't show, but I teaser displays so of content. I, would that be stuff that you would normally do via other fields or? Oh, sure, sorry. Um, so teaser, if you want to do a teaser display of your content, mm -hmm. are you using fields that aren't what's part of Bricks, or can you use the Bricks fields for the teaser display? Okay, Bricks is a just field type. Uh, it actually, internally, it, this is an entity reference. Mm -hmm. Behind it is extended entity reference. So you can use bricks everywhere. You can use the fields. You can use for teaser, for body. You can have multiple fields of type bricks on the page. It doesn't matter. It's just a field which yeah. can hold the data of any structure inside it. That's the thing about it. Okay, so you might have a field for your teaser that you yeah, can build sure. the brick. Okay. Sure, you can have a teaser, you can have a body, yeah. and you can control uh, as usual. Okay. But the thing is, in, inside these fields can be any data of any structure of any layout. Okay, thank you. Um, and the other one was just about the styles text field. Would there be, like, I thought a value add there might be to uh, have a drop down of predefined styles for each. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a actually issue in the queue about it. Yeah, it would be more useful. The next step is to work on user experience. Now I was focusing on the data storage and the whole uh, concept and architecture. Okay, thank but, you. But yeah, you're right. Um, my question is about, you said um, you can reuse the layouts, and I didn't quite get where and how you would do that. Yeah, yeah, uh, the short answer is, uh, um, like for when you're using paragraphs, for example, when you create a paragraph type to column layout, and you can, and when you put some data inside this paragraph of column, of two column layout, you couldn't reuse uh, this paragraph on other pages because it holds its data in this layout. So layout and data are not separated with paragraphs. But with bricks, it is because layout is one, in one place and the data references to layout. 
So you can reuse layouts because it doesn't hold data anymore. Yeah, I, I just didn't get where, where would you do, where in the user interface or where is the... Uh, yeah, 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 I can show you briefly actually. Okay. So in this demo, here you can just select a layout from drop down equal columns. And here you also can select the same equal columns. So you can reuse, you can nest, combine from page to page, from place to place, doesn't matter. With paragraphs, you have to create a paragraph each new time you want to use it. So it's not reused it actually, it's created also. So I was thinking of the overall layout, which is what this story now is representing. It has. Uh, two columns and then the nested thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you cannot apply that thing then again to another story. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my note about atomicity. Yeah. Uh, this is thing is for creating unique layouts. So, when your data is uh, flexible and different from page to page. But it can be applied. It's the next step. So, with Bricks, you can uh, create a layout and to register it in Layout API. I'm working on it right now. So, later you. It will be possible to reuse this structure on various pages. It's the next step. Hi. Is you, uh, supporting translations and search? Yeah, sure. Uh, as I said, uh, this is a simple and standard entity reference field internally. So everything works with entity reference is working with Bricks too. So uh, the whole this structure is a single multi-value field and uh, as a any usual multi-value field, it can be translated, revision it, everything. So yes, it's working. Uh, first, uh, thank you for addressing a real, uh, real problem with a real uh, uh, solution. Um, my question is, can you limit the uh, flexibility to like limit um, the, how far you can nest and what you can nest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a good question and uh, every time I talk about it, this question is, comes up. So the answer, no limitations. No limitations because this is a flat structure. It's stored internally as a single multi-value field. No matter how deep you go, this is a single multi-value field so you can deep and deep, it can be 10 or 20 levels, doesn't matter. The only limitation is UI because it just couldn't hold all of these levels and to represent this structure. But internally, no limitations. And no performance issues because there is no recursion. It's loaded once because this is a single multi-value field. So yeah, I think you are going to ask. What about um, mobile content? So when I want to have it, um, a special layout for mobile? Uh, it's uh, a next step uh, we should work because this is for internal representation of the layout and the, to reference the data which can be reused. But how precisely to control the layout? Uh, it's uh, up to us and uh, it's the next step. When I talk about user experience, I meant uh, this as well. How about for like integration of the layout with like feuds? So like something like Panelizer. So like let's say I have a product, right? And the product has feuds that are not just like text, but meaningful uh, data, like price, for instance. Uh, does, does, is there any plan to integrate with uh, that, or uh, yeah, yeah, is that not the, the right use case for yeah, the Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, actually, it's not the right use case for that, because this thing is to manipulate in the data inside field. So when you are going to combine several fields together is, uh, is what about uh, penalizer is. So internally, it's the same mechanism, uh, layout API, penalizer, using Layout API and now, and Bricks also using Layout API. When you select in the layouts here, it's provided by Layout API. So it's internally, it's the same mechanism, but use case is different. Penalizer for layout in fields, and this thing for composing the data of any structure inside field. It's a replacement for Visivik, actually. 
Okay, I think uh, we are finished and thank you for your attention again. Have a great DrupalCon and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions afterwards. You can find me and ask about anything. Thank you very much. Thank you.